All right, National College Football Roundup. We haven't done a podcast since the semifinal games. Whoa. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, the what let, a day. Let, let's start with TCU Michigan. Kind of what what stood out to you in that one, dude? Um one of the things that really stood out is how well TCU's defense played early. You know, one of the things that that we had, had talked about was you know how different that defense is and how Michigan hasn't seen it and it took them a while to adjust. Now they came to life in the second half, but early on, man, it was tough sledding for them. And I'd say the freshman nose tackle held up pretty good. You're right. It's Ola Watimi. He, I mean, that's that dude is a beast and he did a pretty good job. I, I would say overall, like the first play of the game, right? First run of the game. It was like, Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, they ripped off a 50, whatever yard run with Edwards and I was questioning everything I knew about football. I was like, I'm an idiot. I told everyone TCU was going to hold up well, you know, picked him to cover all this stuff. And it was, uh, but they, they settled in defensively and, and really until, you know, Michigan had to dial up some trickeration to score some points. And when they got to the QB run game stuff with JJ McCarthy, I think they realized, okay, hey, changing the math with the QB run game. Uh, was was a way that just a route they had to go to really produce the, the the way that they wanted to on the ground. But we talked about the QB advantage for TCU coming into the game, and I thought that was the difference, man. I thought Duggan was awesome. I know he had the two interceptions, but they were competitive plays, almost kind of unlucky plays that ended up getting picked off. Meanwhile, J.J. McCarthy, oh, boy, you throw two pick sixes, in a game of that magnitude, that's hard to shake, man. That's hard to shake. So that uh, the quarterback, the quarterback difference in the game. I mean, Duggan did not make the critical errors that McCarthy made, in my estimation. I know you look at the stats, and Duggan didn't have a spectacular game, but I thought, I thought he played well, man. I, I did, and he used his legs. And that affected a lot of the run game stuff that opened things up for Kendra Miller before he got hurt. And then Amari D Mercado who came in and I thought played his ass off, even with the fumble throughout that second half. But I, I thought Duggan's effect on the game was, was significant. Yep. He was good. And you know, that, that was really the one thing that, that stood out overall is that TCU just, they looked like the better football team, right? They just, they went toe to toe with Michigan and, and beat them and were close to not just beating them, but beating their ass. Like they almost ran away with the thing. Michigan came back and turned it into a really good football game, but TCU absolutely looked like they belonged on that stage with the top teams in the country. And they got it done. This is – it just continues to be a, a special year for TCU, man. Fun to watch. And I, I think the most impressive thing throughout the football game, and we talked about it coming into the game, TCU had been in the close games, right? They had been in the battles. They knew what it was like to feel that pressure. Their ability to answer when things got tight, right? Like it was – Michigan comes back. It's 21-16. Felt like Michigan had all the momentum in the world. TC goes right down the field, scores, then they get a pick six. Mm -hmm. And it was like when you when, – when some teams that haven't been there, like TCU hadn't been there, you would – you would, in that moment, you would expect them to have a case of what I call lemon booty. Right? <laughs> get real tight. Yeah. Puckered up. Yeah. They, they were more than comfortable. And that that was the most impressive thing to me. And you you mentioned, I think if DeMarcado doesn't fumble that ball, TCU ends up winning by two touchdowns. Yeah. And I know people want to say, oh, well, the Roman Wilson, was he down at the one? Listen, hey, man, don't fumble the ball on the dive to score the touchdown. They, you can complain all you want about the spot and was it in, was it not. Don't run Philly special on the goal line and have it fail miserably like it did. Like, the game, these games are about 
taking advantage of opportunities, and Michigan didn't do that. Uh, plain and simple. Like, and I will say this. TCU looked fast as hell like they always look, <laughs> you know, at the skill positions. Like, they looked faster than Michigan. Yeah. And six on defense, Jamel Hodge, that, he's a killer. You know I love yeah. me some Jamoy Hodge. Come on, man. He, the guy, is an absolute killer. Uh, he's fun to watch. And, hey, if if you're questioning, like, if TCU belongs on this stage, the two – time running best offensive line in college football ran Philly special from like the half yard line instead of, of trying to run over the top of TCU right that kind of tells you what they were feeling at that point in the football game so yeah no I I thought it was thought it was great super super entertaining football game which we needed man we needed it was it was awesome and the other one wasn't too bad either. There was some talent on the field in Ohio State, Georgia. Uh, what a game. I know they lost. But listen, C.J. Stroud was spectacular. Um, I think out of any individual who played in the semifinals, I, I think he earned the most respect out of anyone. And he was already what projected to be a top five, top ten pick. But he was fantastic. He looked so like head and shoulders above everyone when it comes to being the best player on the field. It was fun to watch it. I was just like, oh my gosh, he can run. He can move. It's just, we hadn't seen that from him, but yeah. And he's thrown to some great players, right? Marvin Harrison Jr. is a stud. Abuka's is a stud. Like they got dudes everywhere at the skill positions. not at this point though, right? In the season. I mean. All those teams are throwing to studs. Yeah, he he looked awesome. And I think, I, I don't know the difference between being picked fifth and picked first, but I think he made himself a whole lot of money. Yeah, for sure. Yep, offensively, they, they were up and down the field. Looked like they had it. God, that is a brutal way to lose a football game. Never Ugh. leave it up to the kicker. What are we That's doing? Right. That... Their inability to get anything, right, to get to make it an easier field goal after C.J. Stroud rips off a run that felt like it felt like it was the game, right? It was like, oh my gosh, he just took off. He ran inside the you know the field goal range green line they had on the field. You're like, oh my god, they're gonna be they're gonna do it. They're gonna beat Georgia, but their inability to get anything on first, second, or third down and give give Georgia's defense credit, but. Oh, to not get, what's his name, Ruggles, any closer and to put him in that situation, ooh, not good. Poor guy. That had, and there, poor yeah, guy. There was no drama to that kick at all. I mean, as soon as the foot hit the ball, it was no good, <laughs> which that's a tough spot to be in, man. I, I know it. It's not easy, uh, but hey, man, that's the difference between winning and losing. It's, it's crazy that a guy that, for the most part, has been standing on the sideline for the entire football game is going to go out and decide the season for you. But it's, that's the sport we play, man. That, that's, why, that's why you need to be nice to your kickers. Have, <laughs> have those guys in the proper state of mind. Um, Stetson Bennett wasn't at his best, but when they needed him to be great, they needed him to step up there in the fourth quarter. He delivered, man. He he had he had some beautiful, beautiful throws on those last couple of drives, pushing it down the field with confidence, uh, being really aggressive, and he's thrown to some dudes as well. <laughs> so I, I thought, although he wasn't at his best, he delivered when he needed to deliver. And this is not any groundbreaking analysis, but Marvin Harrison Jr. is very good at football. Sucks, Ooh. absolutely sucks that he got hurt. Because I do think him going out in the late third, and I thought that that hit was clean, man. I thought it was clean. It's unfortunate that he couldn't come back in the football game. But I'm not so sure that Ohio State just doesn't keep racking up points if he stays in the game. They had no answers for that dude. Hard to. 
when you've got a guy of that size and pedigree and athleticism. Yeah, that it's now at the end of the I wasn't sure how I wanted things to unfold, but I I feel like and maybe I'm wrong and maybe you disagree, but I feel like Ohio State would have been the better matchup for for TCU, but we'll see. I I and by no means do I think TCU is not going to be in this national championship game. I think they have a legit chance to win it, and I think the the spread is stupid. Yeah, I I agree. Let's just we'll we'll do a deeper dive, a deeper preview on Sunday's episode uh, about the title game. But let's just do some initial thoughts on the TCU Georgia matchup. I agree. I would have rather seen TCU play Ohio State. But I do think Georgia showed some vulnerability in that game. I, I really do. I think that – and does it, – it's not like TCU doesn't have absolute burners at wide receiver like Ohio State. Now, we could get in a debate like, hey, would you rather have Quentin Johnson or Marvin Harrison Jr.? Like that's I, – I think both of those guys are, are elite, elite, right? Yep. But – it may come down to the other guys and to think Georgia. I mean, if I'm TCU, Hey, where's number five <laughs> and Keely Ringo, he's got all the measurables you want, but he gave up play after play after play against Ohio state. So I don't think TCU is turning on that Georgia film, especially that offense going, Oh, Oh, we, we have no chance. I, I think that, I think it's going to be way closer. What the spreads like 12 and a half, 13. Yeah. I, all TCU does is play close games, man. I, I just don't, I don't see Georgia I think TCU just coming wins out. It. Yeah. I think TCU wins it. I, obviously anything can happen. I, I, I could, I, Georgia, you know, if, if you're looking at the entire roster, they've got the talent advantage and nobody's going to dispute that. But when you go starter for starter, it ain't that it ain't as far as we would think. I, if, and if we would have made that statement to start off the season, you know, deservedly uh, would be slapped by somebody, but where we stand right now, I don't know. Whenever you look at the pass catchers that TCU has across the board, they got the edge at quarterback, in my opinion. Agreed. Um, defensively, they they've got playmakers in the right spots. They got really good cover guys. They got two excellent inside linebackers. They've got adequate defensive line, and they've got a scheme once again that Georgia is not going to be used to. So yeah, you just you don't see now you see it some in the SEC. Right, what Odom was running it at Arkansas. There's a couple other places that have implemented it, but it's going to be very hard for Georgia to replicate in practice. Right, it, it's just if that's not what you do, it's it's hard to simulate what TCU's got going on. And Gillespie's going to have some wrinkles, man. Going to have some wrinkles. Now, I do. I really like Georgia's run game. Uh, Macintosh, I'm a huge fan of that guy. Hey, their their one two punch at running back is good. Kendra Miller's health is is very important. Uh, it when you're not able to come back in the game and play, like can you be ready to go ten days later? I don't know. There's a lot of good medicine out there. I'm I'm hopeful, but him not being available as good as Demarcado is and and you and I love him as a backup running back. Miller not being out there feels really significant for it TCU. Does. But with that being said, you look at what Stroud was able to do with his legs against that Georgia defense. Duggan runs better than Stroud and is certainly more willing to run it than Stroud with what we saw, like Max Duggan could have 150 yards rushing against Georgia, depending yeah. on how they want to play some things and what they want to take away defensively. So I, I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. 
how people can just assume that George is going to beat them by three touchdowns. I, I get it. They've got way more talent, but how many times does TCU have to prove that they're a really damn good football team? <laughs> you know, like, just, I, don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. You know, I think that it's just been pounded into our head how good Georgia is. And they are like, I I'm, I'm don't want to take anything away from Georgia, but you know, they just gave up what 40 points, 41 to Ohio state. And I, that's a team that doesn't give up points very often. And to see that number on the scoreboard and whenever they're going through corrections with the coaches, like it's a shot to the ego. And then you look over and you see the team you're about to play. And I know they they had some pick sixes and stuff, but, See that team just put up fifty one on another top five defense. I the pressure in this game is all on Georgia's side, all of it. Not just because of you know a, a little bit of David and Goliath going on here and trying to go back to back and all of those things, but TCU is like you could throw everything out the window like. They are not going to be scared of anything. And they've been in dogfight after dogfight after dogfight. And like you said earlier, same thing with Michigan. They they aren't going to back down whenever things are perhaps stacked against them. And unlike some of the other teams that have that have played in, in uh national championships or against Georgia, they will it, they will not stop generating offense. That is going to continue to happen the entire football game. Even if Max Duggan's not out, like backup quarterback wise, they got a dude that's coming in that's maybe better running the football than than Duggan. So they won't be out of it even if something like that were to happen. Yeah. It's I'm hoping it's a much better game than a lot of people think it's gonna be. But we'll talk more about it on Sunday.